and then Obadiah 3 and 4. Once again, thank you. Uh, I, I, I pulled a little uh, stunt on her. And I was supposed to email these to her. I, I forgot to tell you I left my computer at home. <laughs> I said so. <laughs> Read that. Thy are holy. Thy what? Say it again. It's the word tiplesheth in the Hebrew. It means the terror you inspire or a shuddering. Okay, go ahead. Have what? So the terror has power to but deception is a spiritual term, not a political term. So whatever terror is will have the power to deceive, which is religious in orientation. Go ahead. And the pride of your heart, all you that dwell in the clefts of the rock, you hold the height of the hill, though you shouldest make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from hence, saith the Lord. Can I tell you that terrorism will be brought down by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Those are all the of three and four. This is talking about terror, religion, rocks, people that live in rocks and clefts of hills. Read. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You that dwell in the clefts of the rock, your habitation is high. You say in your heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, get it. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and you set your set nest among the stars. All right. Okay, hold on. Leave that up there, man. Leave that up there. Hear this. The pride of your heart has to do with deception. You dwell in the clefts of the rock. That will be Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. Your habitation is high. That means you are elevated. Now, please listen to this. The terror, terrorist, pride, arrogance, the cleft of the rock means a spiritual covering in the scripture. As high as an eagle represents religious thinking and among the stars represents angelic association. So there is a religion that will be arrogant and proud. Who shall bring me down? In the cleft of a rock, elevated thinking. That will be as high as an eagle, religious in the mind, among the stars, angels. Now listen carefully. Who are these people? Terrorism is the inspiration of a deceived group. Their deception is caused by their misguided theology. They feel that they are nestled among the stars. By the way, Islam was brought about by angelic visitation from Gabriel to Muhammad. Allah is their God, so they ascend to the highest point of Islamic theology where they commit jihad to get people to paradise. Yeah. There it is. But that's not what I want to deal with tonight. I want to show you something. Does anybody know in the scripture of a man that is called the Antichrist? Would you say amen? amen. Now, do you, John, do you believe the Antichrist is alive? I, I feel that he is. The scripture says where he is. Right. Turkey, Syria, Greece, or Egypt. One of the both. The Bible says he is the little horn coming out from the four horns. And the four horns were Lysimachus, Cassandra, Ptolemy, and Seleucus, which were the four generals of Alexander. You know, that's right. He comes out of that. He is the Antichrist. So we know he comes from Egypt, Syria, Greece, or Turkey. We know that. Now, the Quran, I don't have time to go ahead and talk about, uh, first of all, I want to tell you God loves Muslims, uh, God loves Hindus, God loves Catholics, God loves Christians, God loves Sintuists, God loves scientists, God loves Christian scientists. God just hates what a lot of them do. See, God can differentiate between hating something you do and hating you. Christian people haven't learned to do that. They haven't learned to hate what somebody does them but love the person. Well, they're going to be wrong. I can forgive, but I can't forget. How about if God does what you do? How about if he forgives you, but don't forget? That's right. Why, why do you ask of God something that you don't do yourself? That's right. Amen. 
you can forgive and you can forget. Yes. Well, I, I can forgive that person, but I'll never ever bring that person into my inner circle. How about if Jesus said that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Have you ever offended Jesus? Uh -huh. How often have you offended him? How often has he forgiven you? And how often has he brought you back? Yes. Please don't treat people the way you are treated. Please treat people the way God treats you. Yes. Amen. I wish I had a witness right there. You were shouting just now. But yeah. the yeah. 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 False spirituality. The Quran has a teaching about the last days. I want to tell you about that teaching. I cannot quote. I've got about 25 script, uh, scriptures. What they call their holy word. Uh, from the Quran. From the Hadith. And from the Sunnah. But I cannot quote them today. I just want to talk to you about the Antichrist. The Quran has something in the last days called its eschatology. This is what it says. One, they call the last days the day of uprising and the day of separation and the day of reckoning. They say that the last days will be preceded by three blasts of a trumpet. Get the similarity? They say that all creatures in heaven and in earth will be struck by terror. They say that all creatures in heaven and earth will die. Forty years later, they will be raised for judgment, and the length of the judgment is a thousand years. I want you to see some similarities. Is anybody seeing any similarity here? Remember what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, a group of people that are in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, who say in their heart, who will bring me to the ground, they are exalted as an eagle, and their nest is among the stars, and there's a demonic revival, and their capability of touching kings by nuclear association and by riches and wealth brings the world to the edge of Armageddon. Okay, hold on. There's a teaching called the teaching of the twelve, or the twelfth imam, the Mahdi or the guided one, will come as the Islamic Messiah. The Shiites believe in a teaching called the teaching of the twelve. Twelve caliphs, that means since Muhammad, there were twelve caliphs. Eleven came, and when the twelfth came as a boy, he, was, he disappeared. He will come back as the twelfth imam that is called the Mahdi, or the Islamic Messiah. Now, here are some of the beliefs about the Islamic Messiah. Are you ready for this? I would love to talk to you about the first jihad, the second jihad, and the third jihad. But let's see how this goes, and then we'll, we'll see what the Lord will do. Is that okay with you? Yes. All right. I, look, I, I know uh, you've come tonight in good faith, and you've come. I surely don't want to keep you longer than God wants you here. Uh, 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 and I promise you that I won't. Okay? My 45 minutes is just about 20 minutes away. Somehow during the service, my watch stops at quarter after eight. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, yeah. All right, I want to show you some beliefs about the Islamic Messiah. Please listen to me today. After uniting all of Islam, he will take over the world. Does that sound like somebody you hear of? What's his name? All right. Under his leadership, there will be a great prosperity. Does that sound like anybody? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He will control the gold and the silver of the world. What does the Bible say in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 9? That the Antichrist will be great towards the east and control the gold and silver of the world. After this, the Mahdi will rule for seven years. Oh boy. Does that remind you of anyone? After this, the end of the world will come and the judgment of Allah. Does that remind you of anyone? Yes. Help me somebody. Yes. Uh, let, let me uh, go into more detail. He is believed to be a future Muslim world leader. Does that remind you of anyone? Yes. He will not only rule the Islamic world, he will rule the entire world. Does that remind you of anyone? Yes. There's some question about whether the Antichrist rules the whole world or not. But we, that's one other day. He will lead a world revolution that will establish a new Islamic world order. Does that remind you of anyone? Yeah, yeah, Help me. Yeah. He will fight against the enemies of Islam and Muslims. Does that remind you of anyone? Who does it remind you of? His means of accomplishing this world revolution will be a holy war called Jihad. Does that remind you of anyone? Yeah. The Antichrist will launch an attack in Revelation chapter 12. Of all. Oh, by the way, I've got to tell you this. She has 12 stars. Have you heard of Elenine? Yeah. You have? And the comets behind her, carrying a coma of 12 comets. Pretty amazing, but uh, that's for another day. All right. He will lead the army to Israel and conquer it for Islam. Does that remind you of anybody? He will set up his headquarters in Jerusalem. Does that remind you? The Bible says the Antichrist will move towards Jerusalem. Now hear this. 
he will be deeply loved because of the prosperity he brings. Yeah. Yeah. When he comes, he rides a white horse. He will cause Islam to be the only religion practiced. He will have supernatural power over wind, rain, and crops. He will possess enormous wealth. He says, I am the Messiah. He changes times and laws. What does the Bible say about the Antichrist? He changes Daniel 7, 25. John, did you know that they tried to pass Sharia law in Oklahoma? Yes. I have become very close friends of a state senator. He and I have become very close of Oklahoma. And they tried to pass Islamic Sharia law. The Antichrist will try to change times and seasons. My interpretation is that this is not a cosmic calendar, this is political events, and we will try to do that's one of the things. He will rule over ten entities. Does that remind you of anyone? Both deceive and destroy by peace. Daniel 8, 8.25. Both desire Israel's destruction. I am five foot seven and a half. I'm brown in complexion with a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fellow come to me one day and said, ask me, don't you wish you were white? I said, well, you know, you, you don't talk to the preacher because the preacher is smarter. I said, sir, with all due respect, I see your people going into tanning boots to look like me. Yeah. <laughs> and you end up looking like yellow leather. <laughs> Do you see me using Clorox to look like you? in prophetic history where everything concerning the predicted prophetic scenario is before us. Yes. Yes. Everything. Yes. Yet, some Christians are caught up on trivial things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. May I ask you a question? Is Allah your God? No. no. He's not mine. My God is Jehovah. Amen. Is Muhammad your prophet? No. No more. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a question? Have I said anything to your knowledge that's untrue tonight? It's an ex-Muslim. Amen. 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 Bless you. Yes. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. Would you say that that is an end time deception? Yes. Would you say that that's a revival of demonic power? Yes. Would you say that's a religion that has the power to influence kings yes. of the entire world? Yes. Would you say that? Yes. Are they deceived? Yes. Do they have another spirit? Yes. Do we have the Holy Spirit? Yes. How come they are willing to die? And we can't get you to praise. Yeah. 